Right, so turning now to the war in Ukraine, President Biden is in Poland today, the epicenter of the refugee crisis. Here at home, the Catholic Diocese of Dallas will join Pope Francis and bishops around the world today in a historic prayer for peace in Ukraine and in Russia. Bishop Burns will join the Holy Father in consecrating the two countries to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The bishop invites everyone to an 1130 rosary, followed by noon mass today at the Cathedral Shrine of the Virgin Guadalupe in Dallas. Meanwhile, Ukrainian forces continue fighting back as Chris Adeke joins us in studio with the latest because President Biden has a busy day ahead. Chris? Yes, Mark, we're now one month into this war between Russia and Ukraine, and the questions remain, what can the U.S. and NATO allies do to help the Ukrainian war effort? President Biden in Europe meeting with the other leaders in NATO, and so far this is the commitment they are making. He said that they will help provide humanitarian assistance to those fleeing violence in Ukraine and imposing economic costs on Russia. But Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is hoping for much more. He addressed the NATO summit via video call yesterday, making a plea for just 1% of aircraft, 1% of tanks, 1% of anti-ship weapons from these NATO countries saying you cannot fight a war without them. So far, there's been no announcement from the alliance on providing any of that, but President Biden did say military equipment is being supplied to Ukraine, and he vowed the NATO response would be increased if Russia resorts to using chemical weapons. In the meantime, the president did announce the U.S. will be taking in 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. His trip to Europe will take him to Poland today, a country where nearly 2 million Ukrainians have fled. Some of them may end up in Texas. We spoke to the organization Refugee Services of Texas, and they estimate nearly 12,000 Ukrainians will be brought here, and that number could increase over time. We also spoke to a Ukrainian woman here in North Texas who said her parents are among those that refuse to leave their homeland behind. Every day I call my parents, and they just text me, we are alive. I'm begging them, please come to the United States. You know, they said, no, Natalia. You know, this is our war. And also the sanctions continue. The United States and the European Union have reached an agreement that would supply more U.S. exports of natural gas to the continent. The idea there is to reduce their dependency on Russian exports and thereby further isolate that country. Mark, back to you. Yeah, thank you for that report, Chris, is that refugee crisis is a topic in our latest episode of Yaltics as well. That special release is out now. You can download it by scanning that QR code on the screen as we're joined by a part-time Dallas resident in Moldova who has been on the ground there helping for nearly two weeks. A family 